Last week, the three large roll-up doors were installed on the horse barn, which means it is officially 100% completed on the outside. We still have a lot of work to do inside before we can actually get the horses in the barn. We also got started on rerouting the fencing. It has to be completely rerun because now the barn is in a different place and we need to funnel the horses into their stalls. So we got all the corner posts in the ground and they are concreted and they're ready to go. For today, we are going to get all of the necessary cross beams on those posts and the hardware on so we can start rerunning that fence. So we have a lot of work to do before we can get these horses in that barn before fall. It is fall, before winter. All of these new posts that we got set in the ground last week are nice and sturdy on the very bottom. Up top, there is a little leeway, as can be expected. So we're setting rails between each one. We're actually going to go around and just come up with a cut list so we can grab our measurements, come back to the saw, make all of our cuts at once, come back and then get those rails set in place. Let's go 89 and a quarter. Looks like we have the world's most flexible horse. Lexington's been doing yoga. <laughs> He's been in half. 86 and 5 eighths. Got them all? Yeah. Start cutting, mama. All right, before we cut all 13 of these posts, we're going to make sure that the first one fits and that our measuring method makes sense. So, post number one. Good? Yep. Like the height? Looks like a dude ranch now. It does. It's nice and solid. I like it. Let's keep going. Jeremy's doing his famous stand back and admire everything. So hopefully he doesn't do this all the way around because we have uh, 12 more of these to right, do. I want to make sure it's good. No, it looks good. Let's talk really quickly here about how it is that we are installing these rails between our posts. So we have these long 15 inch timber screws that go through the post into the rail. We're working off of a measurement from the ground to a specific point, actually 52 inches up on the posts. That way, rather than all of our rails being perfectly straight and level, they're just gonna follow the contour of the terrain. So we're gonna go ahead and get all of these wrapped up. Once that's done, we'll actually take a secondary measurement and get all of our posts topped. <laughs> he looks jealous. <laughs> He's like, don't. Okay, so we are realizing here as we uh, were nearing completion that we're actually a couple of rails short. We had a late start to the morning anyway, and so today's just kind of becoming a gradual mess. That means I need to run back into town, grab a couple of those rails, bring them back here, and then at this point, we'll probably just pick things up tomorrow where, with where we are leaving off today. He's like, I don't need no stinking bath. Great day. day. Of a brand new star came in perfect time and measure. Grace and a golden heart, how we've thrown our arms around you. Saints in an endless sky, the heavens. Heaven's looking down upon you Glory, we bask in the sun How you've put your arms around me I've been waiting my whole life I've been waiting my whole life For this Hardware. 
All right, so this is the first very fall-like day that we've had. I think the high for today is like 52 degrees. Yesterday we were in shorts and t-shirts and today it is drizzly and we are cold. So fall is definitely here. We need to get our butts in gear. So Jerry went and got all of the posts yesterday and then right now what we're doing is going around and putting all of the insulators on the post. So this Premier One electric fencing cannot come in contact with metal or anything else, even itself, or it will short out. So you have to use plastic or rubber insulators. So we do have some that are designed for the T posts that we've already been using. And for the wood posts, we have these little black ones that screw in. So Jeremy's going around measuring them out and getting those installed. So Melissa and I have a whole bunch of these plastic insulators to get installed. Fortunately, they have a self-tapping screw, so it's not that bad. We have four that have to be plugged into each post. And what we are doing is taking a series of measurements, making some tick marks on our posts because we want all of our hot wire to be very uniform. And again, just to follow the terrain, the lay of the land. Once we get all of these installed, what we're hoping to do is simply lift this hot wire up and over all of our new posts and rails. We don't want to have to reroute everything from scratch because it becomes a big tangled, jumbled mess. So we'll get all of these plugged in and we'll deal with this hot wire. Jeremy is finishing up that last rail and then he's gonna get his new toy out. It is a T-post puller and he's really excited about it. So we'll show you how that works. And then once we get the T-post pulled that we need to pull, we are going to get the man saver hooked up and get the T-post put where we need them to be. So I wanted to talk really quickly about the loafing shed that the horses have been using for the past two years. This is a clenny pipe structure and it is built on skids, so it is portable. It's not going to remain here in front of the barn. We're actually going to be hooking it up to Big Pape, our tractor, and we're going to be dragging it to the back of our shop. It's going to house the rabbits and the baby doll sheep. So all the rabbits will be in their hutch in one side, which will provide a lot more protection for them. And then the other side, we are going to insulate using the hay that got rained on. That's perfect insulation hay. We're gonna build them kind of like a little hay fort and they're going to be housed in the other side. The reason that we are not putting the baby doll sheep in the stable or in the the stall or the barn with the horses is because it would require them to be inside the pasture fencing and that's not really doable because they are just going to walk right back outside of it with their wool. They don't feel the shock from this fencing at all. So it's just not a good option. Plus the horses hate the sheep. So we're going to keep them separated. So now that we have the barn and we have to remove all of these old T posts, this is where the fence actually was run before the barn was put in. So we need to get rid of these, pull them out of the ground. And that's no easy task if you've ever tried doing this before. Fortunately, I found this brand new tool down at the hardware store when I was there yesterday, picking up the stuff that we needed, um, purchased it. It's brilliant in its simplicity. It just wraps the posts. It's got this lever on it, pulls it right up, no problem. It's dangerous to send you to the hardware store. Oh, I just love stuff like this. I'm just <laughs> looking for something to use. I was going to buy some chain that I came across this thing and it's brilliant. It's so simple. Never sticks to the list. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Easy. Kira's trying to teach Lexan how to bow. I think she's going to be able to do it. He's pretty attentive. He listens to her a lot. So that's her fun little project she's got going on. We are going to be dragging the loafing shed just a little ways. We can't bring it to the back of the shop just yet because that would leave the horses without a shelter. We have not done their stall build out yet, so they can't use their stalls yet. So we're going to leave them with the loafing shed for now, but we do need to move it because it is literally sitting right smack where that back line of fencing is going to go. So before we can drive the T posts, we got to drag the shed. Your straps are old. Well, uh, attempt number one with the toe strap was unsuccessful. I'm going to look around, see if I have any chains. What we should have used 
the first time. Yeah. Oh, I gotta buy a new tow strap. Something else for me to buy at the hardware store. You love it. You're like, oh shoot, I gotta go in the hardware store. Sounds like this project is becoming a series of failures. You wanted the horses. <laughs> I am not really looking forward to moving that thing all the way to the back of the shop. That's gonna be a really nerve wracking day, but for today, we got it to where it needs to be. We have already had a really busy day and so I am so thankful that I do not have to run into town right now. I get to put a nutritious dinner on the table for our kids because thankfully I have a freezer full of Good Shop. Good Shop is super convenient. They offer contact free delivery right to our door and they never disappoint because every order is fully customizable. That means you can pick the beef, chicken, pork and seafood options that your family likes the most. There's literally something for everyone with over 60 high quality cuts ranging from 100% grass fed ribeyes, flavorful T-bones, wild caught salmon, organic free range chicken breasts, thick cut bacon, the list goes on and on. Unlike many other companies, Good Shop sources all of its meat and seafood exclusively from American farms and fisheries. So by choosing Good Shop, you support local family farms and independent ranchers right here in the US. Good Shop sources only the good stuff, meaning all of their beef comes with no antibiotics, no added hormones, and they actually stand behind their exceptional quality by offering a 100% money back guarantee. So tonight we are doing a little surf and turf combo. We are doing some 100% grass fed steaks, some wild caught cod, and then we are finishing off our meal with these crab cakes. These are such a fun little add on. So if you're like me and dinner was becoming a very mundane task, or maybe you just really want to impress your family guys, seriously, look at this meal. It is beautiful. Definitely give Good Shop a try. Just go to goodshop.com slash YouTube or click the link down in the description below and use our code GSL120. That's going to give you a hundred and twenty dollars off across four boxes that's one hundred and twenty dollars off across four boxes when you go to goodshop.com slash youtube and use our code gsl120 drying for like four years now. It should burn though. Pardon me, I'm gonna get it now. What? All right, very exciting morning around here. We are officially ready to start getting this fence run once we get the T-post and stuff. But also our electricians are here and they are starting on the rough and electrical in Gabby, the addition build. So the plumbers are coming next week and that means that we will officially be able to start insulating Gabby before it gets really, really cold, which is great news because we have a lot of work ahead of us inside Gabby. Ready to get loaded up? I am ready to get loaded up. Let's do it. So for driving these T-posts back into the ground where we need them, we are using this pneumatic tool. This just hooks up to your air compressor um, and pounds them back in the ground, basically. It's called the man saver. You could add a couple letters in here if you wanted to get some white decals with a w and o for woman saver whoever's doing the work doesn't yeah. really matter it's all you basically this thing just goes over the top of the t-post and then it's a uh, piston driven drives it right back into the ground does a great job and keeps you from getting exhausted so this man saver isn't ours it actually belongs to our neighbors big thanks to them for letting us use it once again it's been a couple of years since we had to borrow it so it might be a learning curve we're gonna have to figure this out all over again okay try not to smash our hands in the process yeah all right. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. It's there's instructions. Do not dry fire. <laughs> don't, don't dry fire. <laughs> to ensure peak performance, lubricate your tool regularly. <laughs> 
So we're going back to the manual method. There's an issue with the man saver. It is not saving this man. I can't figure out what the problem is. So we're going back to uh, the old T-post sleeve here. As Jeremy works on that post, I wanted to thank each and every one of you that has already sent a gift for our fourth annual pediatric cancer toy drive. So this is, like I said, our fourth year doing this. The organization in the past has been called ACOIN, but this year it is still the same organization, same people, they have just changed their name. They are now the Childhood Cancer Coalition. I just call them CCC for short. So CCC is now completely independent, which means they rely 100% on private donations. They are not part of a large, larger organization. So this year the toy drive is more important than ever. So last week we released the list for 25 pediatric cancer families. This is moms, dads, siblings, and of course, the child that is in the fight of their life. And almost all of those items have already been purchased, but there still are a few items on the list. So since we're doing really good with that part, we are now releasing the general list for the toy closet. So the toy closet is a really special place where the kids can go, whether they are there staying in the hospital for a birthday or Christmas or just a really long, boring stay, or they're feeling down or they have a scary appointment or they've just been diagnosed. They can go into the toy closet. They can pick out whatever they want. And this is just a really special place that boosts morale. And it's something that these kids really look forward to. So they told me that the toy closet is lean, like really, really lean right now. And so we need to get them stocked for the next 12 months. So the list is down below. If you just click see more, it will have an Amazon link. Click the Amazon link. Those items will come directly here. We will organize them. We will package them into this trailer that I am sitting in right now and then personally drive them down to Spokane, Washington, and of course, bring you guys along. Now, there is also a financial aspect to this entire thing. We have a goal of raising $25,000. It's a very lofty goal, but I think we can do it. And again, it's really important this year since they're relying 100% on the private donations. So there are two ways to give financially. One is to send a personal check to our PO box, which is listed in the description below. And make sure that you make those checks out to the Childhood Cancer Coalition. We will gather all of those up and deliver them when we deliver the toys. You can also give via PayPal. The PayPal for the toy drive is also listed in the description below. If you're giving via PayPal, make sure you click friends and family, and that way 100% of your donation is going to go straight to CCC. So I think with all of you guys, we can make this the best year ever. This is literally my favorite thing to come out of this crazy YouTube journey, and we appreciate you guys so much. So on a side note, we also have a second channel where we'll talk about this a little bit more, but we put a new episode out every Wednesday. So this Wednesday, we have a very, very special guest that we are so excited to share with you guys. So if you wanna check that out, we also have a link down below. Now I don't hear any more post banging. I'm pretty sure Jeremy's waiting for me, so I'm gonna get back to work. All right, we got that first T-post pounded in, which means we can run the whole first strand. This is the best strand because this strand doesn't need to be rerun. We can literally just stretch it from where it's at. So this is only gonna take a couple minutes and we will be half done with our fence. With the left side of the fence completely run, it looks amazing. We now have the right side to do. This side is a little bit more complicated and Jeremy's going to have to bang six or seven T-posts into the ground by hand. Hush, boy. You shiver if you think too. Wrestling with the bones beneath your skin, show love to. All right, we are down to the very last bottom strand of fencing. All we have left is these little portions. So these will probably run maybe halfway around. We're going to have to for sure do one splice possibly two splices, but thankfully I have these little coils. So you just wrap these around and it will just make it like it's one strand of fencing. So these are a lifesaver. It doesn't look like Jeremy's going to have to run back into town. Boom. Boom. Simple as that. 
Okay, so we somehow managed to salvage the day with a four strand that is actually in three pieces because we had to uh, tie them back into each other using some coils. It worked out. Yes, it did. It worked out. We have the fence run, which I can't believe it. This was a big project. That looks great though. But it's almost done. Almost done. The horses have been hanging out in the round pen for the last few hours. They definitely want out. So we have one last thing to do before we are officially done. Try so hard. I know how you feel, bud. I know how you feel. It's a series of unfortunate events. Seriously? Come on. And then suddenly it started to rain. After all of that, all week, Jeremy has been working on projects that he never really wanted to do for a couple of horses that he never really wanted to own. But yet he never complained. And it wasn't until I was watching our eight-year-old attempt to wear his own coat while at the same time trying to shelter his sister from the rain that I realized we all do things that we don't really want to do for those that we love. And that's really what love is all about. A collection of actions that maybe we would never otherwise choose for ourselves to serve the people that we love. And we do these things every day. And sometimes they go unnoticed, but yet we say nothing because we love them. Because those are our people and we are theirs. Because what we do matters far more than what we say. Boom, there it is. Two days, mama, just like I told you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, two days. Let's go let the horses out. I'll talk to post tomorrow. And those little tiny actions, or in this case, a very long week speaks so much louder than any words ever could.